Thank you, Cahir Lachan. Minister, you're very welcome into the House again. I think it's important to begin by briefly explaining what the, it is this bill sets out to do. The bill primarily sets out to amend the Cervical Check Tribunal Act 2019 to extend the period for receipts of claims for compensation to the Cervical Check Tribunal until January 2022. Mm -hmm. Section 1 of the bill amends Section 12 of the 2019 Act to extend the current period. This bill seeks to extend the above nine months by a further six months or more per the subsection at the discretion of the Minister. I welcome this bill. It is absolute minimum that should, should be done to compensate hundreds of women that have been affected. These women have been failed not once, but twice by this government. The second failure stemming from the subsequent treatment of these women, which has been nothing short of appalling. I would even point out the fact that we're here for 90 minutes and allocated only to this debate is also disappointing. 90 minutes given to the women who have been failed by this government to then be dragged through incessant and unrelenting legal battles, even though in 2018 the then Taoiseach Leo Varanker falsely promised that no woman would be made go to court, even referring to being aware of the further trauma that a court battle would cause. It is important to remember that these women were made to endure these lengthy, stressful and tenuous court battles. These legal battles made necessary to secure any level of justice, to be then left to suffer not only physical effects of this failure, but also mental and emotional anguish. Cervical cancer is the second most common cancer in women. In Ireland, approximately 270 women are diagnosed with cervical cancer per year, and just under 100 deaths occur from it annually. However, with proper screening and early detection, this disease is preventable. In Ireland, this screening was and is outsourced to US laboratories, a move on the part of the then Fianna Fáil government to undoubtedly cut costs, while having little regard to the difference in screening standards between Irish and US labs. If Fianna Fáil had, to be more, had more regard for the lives of these women, rather than cutting back on costs, the outcome for these women may have been different. However, still the government has prepared to take no fault and instead shifted and continues to shift the blame to US labs that they themselves willingly outsourced the responsibility of, taking screen, of screening to. It must be remembered that Fine Gael is not entirely blameless either. They have even now retained the privatisation of cervical screening in Ireland. Not only did the government fail in its duty to protect these women from this absolutely preventable disease, but they also failed to, sh failed to show compassion, empathy, or indeed any proper accountability in its following treatment of these women. There is a continuing lack of dignity and respect shown to these women. Particularly regarding the lack of accountability, it is, a, it is suitable to reference their actions, or should I say lack thereof, of Chief Medical Officer Dr Tolly Houlihan. Dr Tony Houlihan echoed the, the attitude of this government with regards to these women when he, he was seen to offer his deepest sympathies, but after several chances refused to make an apology or take any accountability over his failure. However, what is perhaps most apparent of Dr Houlihan's actions was the strongly advising against the conducting of a much-called cervical check review. This is the man who went on to the absolute outrage of the public be awarded the freedom of the City of Dublin in January 2020. What message does that send to the women affected by the cervical cancer scandal and to their families? I have no doubt that a similar attitude will arise on the part of Dr Hoolan and his merry team of Neffet when a COVID-19 tribunal of inquiry is conducted. The families... On a point of order, can I ask, the, 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 the Senator is talking about the Chief Medical Officer who reports to me, it, she's making a lot of allegations uh, under privilege. She's naming them now. I, I'm not as familiar with what the rules I... of the Shannon, but in the Dáil, I don't believe this contribution would be, would be, within or, would be in order. I, I apologise. I, I, I retract. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Through the chair, through the chair, through the chair. If I if I've said something... Yes. The yes. Senator continues. The Senator is aware of the issue of privilege in this House and the new rules that we have brought in have been circulated to everybody. I ask you to be mindful of those. While, okay. uh, while comments that are in the public domain are, of course, eligible right. to be discussed in this House, uh, issues of a public nature and uh, or a private nature or a personal nature uh, to a person who is in the public domain, he is still entitled to his good name. So I'd ask you to be mindful, right, okay. mindful of that. 
All right. Thank you. I apologise. Um, okay. I've, okay. The families of those who have sadly passed due to COVID-19... Okay, I missed that one. 20 Irish women dead due to cervical screening error. 136 women battling in court over cervical check scandal. Husband's agony at cervical check letter reveals devoted mother could have been saved. I don't want my children to watch me die in pain. All I want is a choice. These are some of the headlines that relate to a web search of Ireland's cervical cancer screening programme. This is simply not good enough. The state cannot be said to have simply taken the rights, well-being, or put simply, the lives of these women seriously. Thank you.